A Mangere social worker says the wait for state housing is putting young lives at risk. With a Mangere family of six, including a six baby, a sick baby, jammed into a one-bedroom private rental, despite medical advice saying it is unsuitable. That family and more than 11,000 others are on the waiting list for a state house. The father, a full-time forklift driver, has had his overtime hours cut, so the family is struggling even harder to pay for their private rental and put food on the table. The youngest child recently had meningitis, prompting a doctor at Middlemore Hospital to write a letter saying their overcrowded conditions were putting the baby's recovery at risk. But the family says despite providing all this information to the Ministry of Social Development, they're still waiting. An old school lullaby is what's needed to soothe the grumbly baby of this Mangari family to sleep. His parents, though, are kept awake at night by the weight of waiting. More than four years so far for a state house. We really want to tell them we really need a house. We just only have one bedroom in our house. And how many of you live here? Six of us live here. So where does everybody sleep? Two of us, me and the baby in the room, and the little one, the third one inside the room, and my husband and the two boys inside here. Your husband and the two, um, your two sons sleep in the lounge? Yeah, in the lounge. A house? Maybe not. It is a modest unit in Mangari, no more than 60 metres square. A bed's pushed up against the wall in the lounge. It doubles as seating during the day. The sole bedroom has a double and a single pushed up against the wall too. The family's toys are neatly bagged, boxed and stacked to maximise space. If you're wondering, this place is twinkling clean too. A private rental, it costs $365 a week. I try my best to warm it up, but some it's still cold in here. Do you use the heater? Yes, I have to because it's just to warm up the house because of the kids. What does that mean for your power bill? You another, do. another, uh, another bill, bell, too much you... bell. I worry about the bell too, so sometimes I, you know, just turn it off because it's. Too much power. They're not getting an accommodation supplement and there's no winter energy payment for them because this is a working family. They do get a weekly family tax credit of $244. Her husband works full-time as a forklift driver, bringing in about 44000 before tax for just over 40 hours a week. He's been keeping the family financially afloat by churning out up to 20 hours a week over time, bringing the household income up to about 70 Okay. While we're talking, her husband arrives home from an early start. I normally set up my alarm before 4 o'clock in the morning. And who is sleeping in the lounge with you? Me and my three boys sleep outside here. So now the winter's coming, start cold and everyone wants to sleep together to get warm. So when the alarm goes off at four in the morning for you to go to work? Yes. Your boys wake up? Everyone's wake up. How old are your boys? My older one's five years old. My second one, three years old. My third one, two years old. And my four, month, um, four months baby. So everybody wakes up at 4 a.m.? Yes. And when I get to work before five o'clock, I ring my partner to check my boys if they go back to sleep. And she say, no, they, they stay away. We nearly four years we stay in this private house. We applying for house in New Zealand more than four years. Before we move here, we stay at the Ponning house. So we're moving here. We're still waiting for our application at the house in New Zealand. We're still on the top, on the waiting list. Every time we call them, they give us the same answer every week. And what's the answer? No house? They always told us, don't worry, your application being updated. Someone will call you when they, when 
in the house available. What you can't see, because he doesn't want his face shown, are the tears he is desperately fighting back. It looks like they they not care about my kids and my family. And they always told us to go looking for a private house. We can afford to pay the rent, um, the private house. You're struggling to pay the rent on this private house? Yes. Because my works, they cut down the OTs. So now I pay no, my normal hours every week now. So. How many overtime hours did you used to work in a week? Depend, depend. If they want me to stay to, to, my, um, to work overtime, I stay. If they no OT, I finish at 1.30. That's my eight hours every day. But you needed the overtime? Yes, I always need the overtime to make sure my financials every week, some money to feed my kids and my family. And without the overtime, how hard is that? It's very hard to... It's very hard to... A letter from his employer confirms there's a freeze on overtime hours, meaning he's lost about $25,000 of income over a year. The family's had independent budgeting advice. There's a spreadsheet with rows and rows of figures accounting for everything from power and car payments to nappies. The number that matters the most, though, is the one with a negative in front of it at the bottom of the page. Social worker Alistair Russell is from the Mangari East Family Service Centre. Based on uh, the overtime income of 70000 per annum, that's 60 hours per week, there was still $40 a week in deficit. This is a family that is working, living week by week with no prospect of saving and the ability to move into more suitable private housing is just not real. While we talk, Mum soothes her youngest. He's a little grisly from an earache and a chest infection that's almost cleared. A food survey estimates basic food costs of more than $260 a week for a family of this size. They are spending just $200 and that includes the likes of nappies and special toiletries for one of the older boys. He's got the eczema and the asthma. He's not allowed to eat some of the food that we're trying to stop him from that one, and even some of the clothes and the, the things that we are using in the house. Even in, for the puff, he's not allowed for using any, some of the soaps. The children's medicine sits beside the sink. Recent correspondence from MSD says the family's income and medical issues have already been taken into account when it comes to their waitlist rating. And a housing escalation team has reviewed the case. Still no movement. Alistair Russell again. This family is doing everything it can to support themselves and to look after their kids and all they need is a break and a house so that their kids can live a life with dignity and hope for the future. That is being denied them, and whilst that goes on, these children are an ongoing risk of serious illness. Tragedies could occur in this situation if nothing is done. The, the family's well-being should be paramount. The children's well-being should be paramount. The government and Jacinda Ardern says that child poverty is at the top of their agenda. Where is the evidence of that? For this dad, there is no space for politics. His mind is full of numbers, with a small corner reserved for hope. Sometimes my partner ring me to come home. I told you, I can't come home. I don't want my kid, my kids to struggle. I don't want them to. Stay with no food. How much do you worry about putting food on the table and paying the power bill and paying the rent? How much do you worry? I'm so worried about every Every week I could pay 
I always sit down at work and meet my projects, what money going for my rents and my bills, and the leftovers buy my kids' food. I feel happy. If if we get the house from the house in New Zealand, I make me happy, because I want my kids to to stay healthy, happy every day. What do you want for your family? What would you like? I want my kids be happy. Now, Checkpoint started asking the Ministry of Social Development about this family's situation last week. Today, MSD called them to say that their waiting list priority rating has gone up two notches from A14 to A16. Now, to put that in context, the highest rating is A20. MSD says it reassessed the couple's application since we got involved and realised that it had overlooked a letter from the Monaco DHB about the couple's current accommodation affecting the children health. The Ministry's Regional Commissioner, Mark Goldsmith, says we're sorry for this. Mr Goldsmith says unfortunately demand for public housing continues to outstrip supply and how much a family can afford to pay for housing is a key component in assessing a household's priority rating. MSD says the couple first applied for the State House waiting list in 2015, but their case was closed off because more information was required, and in June 2017 they reapplied. Also, the social worker that you saw in our piece says the family were contacted today by MSD uh, following a reassessment and were told that they should be eligible for an accommodation uh, support of about $120 a week.